You're on. Okay. God today is wanting to ask the world. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now in this life, how are we exactly related to God? And how is it that God seeks after us? The Bible says he is jealous for us. My son sings a song I tell him to, um, I say, uh, jealous is not the name of the song, but I said, sing jealous. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's about the Lord who is um, jealous for us. And, uh, you know, God has wanted to ask a question. I saw this on TV the other day on that movie called The Kid. <clears throat> and this kid was trying to get this older fellow who was him. Was, you have to see the movie to know what I'm talking about. But trying to get this lady, trying to pop the question to marry them, him. <laughs> so... And I thought, you know what? This is exactly what God is trying to do to us. Right now, we are in that state where God is literally trying to um, get men in the position where his heart will be fixed to say yes, where Christ is concerned, a wedding, a wedding. And not only that, but God is wanting you to bear his children. Isn't that a strange thing to say? <laughs> kind of makes the men feel not so manly. <laughs> but this is what is, God is asking. Now listen to this. I want to This is not This is not perversion I'm talking about. This is the how God is relating to us as far as we're concerned because in preaching, there's labor. In preaching. In spreading the gospel, there is a burden to be bared. Equal to that of a woman's nine-month pregnancy. I mean, you know, I'm writing a book right now, and in it I'm putting in some of the horrible things that I've been through in my life. But God has made all those things, put them there so that I can be able to minister to the people of the last days because because we minister with our brokenness. We minister with our brokenness. Our compassions they bleed over into other people's compassions making us like one another. And that's how God has picked for us to relate to it. We need to wake up to the reality that we live in a cursed world. We live in a cursed world. <clears throat> this is what it says in Galatians 4 here. I want to go down to about verse 17. Um, let's actually start at verse 18. But it is good to be uh, zealous, affected always in, in a good thing. Apostle Paul is talking here to the church of Galatia. He says, and not only when I am present with you, he says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. Okay. And those types of things are always in uh, the birth of a... You know what? pastors who are losing faith in themselves today you know our, our pastor is going through a, a space right now where he is up and he is down he is up and he is down because because of his long time suffering you know once you suffer with people for a while and it seems like they're just never going to be birthed you know my 
wife, I think, on a, with our last daughter, she was uh, went like 10 months or something. You know, I mean, it was a real long pregnancy. And we were contemplating naming her fetus. <laughs> Not really, it's a joke. It's because doctors wouldn't Doctor put her called in her anymore. princess when she came out. She still thinks she's a princess today, by the way. But uh, these things are so discouraging when it when it happens, and you know. But when she did, when she did come out, man, I mean, slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. She just popped right out, you know. I mean, it, it didn't take 45 minutes from start to finish, and <clears throat> and God is wanting us. To be willing to go through these things like this when God pops the question he expects everything for us to expect everything that is coming and to know what's coming and that's why he's left such word there for us and because of these last days that we're living in is, is hard times and we need to work hard to get people to notice who God is and we need to suffer we need to put our you know, everything is done for the child. We we put our wants and desires aside. Like my wife around the house, man, she always makes sure everybody else's needs are met before she sets down to eat or whatever. You know, she does laundry, does keeps house and keeps everything in order and inside the house. And that's what God wants out of a good, faithful person. If you're a pastor of a church. God expects you to take care of the needs of those people before you take care of your need. You know something, if you got somebody in your church who is hungry and um, you have food, God expects you to share that food with whoever is hungry. Either that or you're just not being a good pastor. Amen. A pastor's job is hard. A pastor's job is suffering. A pastor's job is long sometimes and not easy. You have to get up in the middle of the night. I called my boss here a while back, and I said, Boss, you know, we have very few people in our factory in the department I work in. It's very limited, so it's not just like anybody could take over a job because there's only one person coming in to follow me. And it was on the weekend. Was it on the weekend? No, it was a weekday at that time. And anyways, I called the boss, uh, and it was... Uh, a, like 11:30 at night, I'm waiting on this next guy. I'm waiting on him, and uh, I called the boss. I said, "Boss," I said, "the next guy didn't show up." I said, "What do you want me to do?" He says, "I don't know." He says, "I'm sleeping here," and hung up the phone. <laughs> so, so I called his boss. <laughs> you know, I mean, what else can I do? You know, I don't, I don't schedule those people to come in. <clears throat> now I did call the guy that was supposed to come in I couldn't get a hold of him his phone was turned off so I called him and called him and called him I left an answer a message on his answer machine and this and that and nothing so so I called his boss anyway I called my boss's boss and and Finally, by and by, they called somebody else that was not supposed to come in. And anyways, he came in, or actually they had me call him. He came in, took over. And the next day, boy, did the fur fly. I'm telling you, everybody was in trouble. Nobody was happy with me. And I didn't do nothing. I just called people's attention to the expectation that was to be. I, I really didn't do anything. I just, hey, you know, this is what God expects of you. This is what's natural. This is what's coming. This is what we need to do in order to do what is necessary to be who we are. God wants us to do these things in, res in a responsibility of having, of having a compassion for one another. And doing that thing which love would cause you to do. You know what? Marriage is, is all about a love. Listen to this. Jeremiah 3 and 14 says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. 
and I will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. He says, turn to me for I'm married. You know, it, people, they get divorced today. But Jesus says in the beginning this was not so. God didn't create a marriage for it to break up. Well, you know what? When, when you're married to a person in God's eyes, it's the same as you become one person. In other words, there is no divorce in God. If you married this person, get what? and break up and go out and do something else and Paul gives a lot of instruction in this and you'll find that what I'm telling you is exactly true if you go and do a study of marriage but you being married to this person now you have another person over there so that person goes and gets married to someone else and you're married to someone else and in God's eyes you're both committing adultery because you've left your first love and Jesus says that in here he says, you have left your first love. Hang on a second. I will bring it up here. Oh, my God. That means we um, committed adultery on Jesus. That's exactly right. Because we left Jesus. When you... When uh, we leaving. Yeah. We, I married you, so I committed adultery against Jesus. Uh, in the in Revelations 2, 4 the Lord was talking to the church there um, he was talking to the church there let me see what church was he talking to um, King James says nevertheless I have someone against thee because you have left your first love to the church of Ephesus he was talking to okay you've left your first love so and, and the Lord doesn't want us uh, to be running back and forth like that man today that people have five six seven wives one fella uh, uh, the woman at the well came up to Jesus and <laughs> he said um, he says draw me some water He says, draw me some water. I think that was John chapter 4. Uh, and I'm just checking here to make sure. Um, draw me some water. And and the Bible says that the, uh, the, the people were astounded because normally Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. <clears throat> yeah. And... He said, he says, you give me this water here. He says, but I give you water that if you drink, you'll never thirst again. And the woman says, give me this water. And then Jesus began to tell her about her husband. She'd had five husbands. He says, the one that you're with now, you said you have had five husbands. But because he told her, he says, go and call your husband. She says, I have no husband. And and the Lord says, you said rightly, he says, you had five, and the one you're with now is not your own. So, and this is not a new thing. So, it's not something that just happened yes, yesterday or just happened with this generation of people. No, this kind of thing has been going on, you know, backslide. Because our flesh is all the same. Christ did not mean for us to do this in that fashion. You know, meant for us to stay together, one on one person uh, to be together for now and for eternity for now and for eternity but our flesh is what has our flesh is what has trouble doing that thing which God requires us to do and, and, and truthfully man you know truthfully uh, I don't have everything 100% I don't think anybody does we wrestle with these things continuously all the time you know and when you get sick when you get sick you get downhearted I've seen some preachers who fought for God all their lives and at the end of their life they would get sick and the, these degradating things come out of them and and you know it's because of the flesh the thing that we fight with 
all of continuous time but but God wants us to be faithful and true and holding to his hand with you know, learn how to do these things I remember King David at the end of his life they brought to him a woman so he could get his body a virgin brought to him a woman and the Bible says but he knew her not you know David had learned man you know no wonder God loved David so much because even even in his extreme stress he was faithful man it's hard to do that I get so aggravated sometimes man I would just like to pop somebody God wants to pop the question but sometimes I want to pop their eye you know but God wants us God wants us he's asking you today marry me and bear my children <laughs> I had a dream one time where I was pregnant I mean you should have seen my belly man poached out there just like my honeys when we used to have babies you know and in this dream I'm like how's the thing even in there you know and they some, said something about it's attached to your abdomen you know what that means you know what the Bible uh, the original words in the Bible when it says um, a, a deep love it's it's referred to as the bow or the heart today we use the word heart but in those days it was the word bowels meaning meaning the depthness no deeper can you go love than that and in that dream the word abdomen means way down here way down there where your most where your most uh, forceful feeling can be conjured up and that's exactly how God wants us to relate to him in this relation called marriage uh, where the lamb is going to be at that feast the bridal feast of the lamb we're going to be over there and we are going to sit down in the presence of the father we are going to be the bride you know what my honey had a dream one time about the marriage supper of the lamb and in this dream she looked way down this way and there was this table that was filled that there was no end. She looked way down that way. just no end to this table. I had a dream of what? Up on the mountain. See where you walked up on the mountain. The Last Supper. And, yeah, it's the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's uh -huh. what it is. And see the supper that Jesus started in, in that upper room? It's, it's not over until it's finished at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And uh, it was it was called the Last Supper here, but there it'll be called the First Supper, because the Bible says the first things that are last on the earth will be the, and the last things will be first in heaven. You know what I'm saying? All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget to think about that question. God is wanting you. He's going to pop the question today. Amen. All right, God bless.